now it's recording, so. All right. So um, as a quick introduction to the team, um, my name is Allison Paget. I'm one of the survivorship nurse practitioners here at Christ Hospital. I've been in the role for a few years now, um, seeing patients uh, going over some survivorship concerns such as sleep. Um, and uh, we do some of these kind of educational programs as well. Um, and we just find that it's uh, really beneficial to kind of have someone in that role to help sometimes with this tricky transition from active treatment to survivorship. So, um, and that's my lovely picture in the middle, top middle, and then Alondra Cassidy is on my left. She's my counterpart uh, nurse practitioner in survivorship and she sees patients as well. And she'll be talking a uh, little bit later as well tonight. Um, Aaron Stat, he's our survivorship uh, nurse practitioner. Uh, nurse navigator who is uh, very integral uh, to our team and how we, how we function. And then Hannah um, is another survivorship NP that's on our team that focuses on gynecologic um, oncology. And then Misty Bostic is also here tonight and she is um, our oncology social work supervisor. And she actually started these survivorship programs way before we had this big robust survivorship team. So she's just a great resource and really has put a lot of um, time and energy and love into making sure our survivors um, have what they need. And then last but not least, um, Tina Walter is here tonight as well. So she's an oncology yoga therapist. Uh, she provides interventions to our patients, both inpatient and as an outpatient setting. She also teaches a lot of different classes at Cancer Support Community. And uh, we are just really lucky to have her tonight. And as a, she's just a great asset to educate and instruct on these um, ways to kind of um, illicit relaxation. So um, again, so um, this is the first of a series of four, um, the survivorship wellness series. So kind of a quick background. Uh, last year, we decided to send out a survey to um, all the oncology offices for um, a few weeks. And um, that's to ask the questions, you know, what are the top concerns that you're having right now? Um, what are you struggling with? What do you need more instruction or information on? So we took those results and um, we're gonna focus on each of them for these series. So um, sleep was one of them. And the other three concerns were um, fear of recurrence, um, which is the event that we'll do next um, in the next couple months-ish, um, fatigue, and weight management dietary recommendations. So, um, and as you can probably assume, all four of these are very much interconnected. So hopefully we have some great discussions on um, how we can really figure out some of the roots of these issues, um, how they relate, and really try to give you tools um, or at least a pathway to uh, feeling better. So um, this is the agenda for tonight. So um, I'll talk um, somewhat briefly on sleep and survivorship and just the general sleep basics. Um, Alondra will be talking about strategies to promote, promote sleep and some of the resources that are available to you. And then um, Tina's gonna be doing the deep relax relaxation practice, the yoga nidra, and then we'll have a short uh, Q&A at the end. So sleep and survivorship, um, really poor sleep quality and high sleep disturbances are pretty consistently reported as one of the most uh, distressing symptoms, um, really not only in, in treatment, but in survivorship and not only in survivorship, but long-term survivorship. So um, really um, it's something that is is really uh, challenging for a lot of patients. Um, and actually, according to a relatively new study published January 2020, um, one of five survivors report poor sleep quality and about 51% um, of long-term survivors reported high sleep disturbances. So um, this is definitely something that is A, very common, um, B, very disruptive, and C, something that we clearly need to get better at um, effectively treating. 
So, and the study also showed uh, the top associations or concerns that caused these sleep issues were fear of recurrence, emotional distress, pain and fatigue, and um, economic uh, distress, which, as you can see, are very similar to the top um, four things that are most um, concerning for our patients. So um, kind of show that interconnectedness. Uh, and this really can be a challenge because sometimes it's hard to find the root of the issue. But um, what's also comforting is that just as, um, as one is maybe misaligned, it affects the other. Um, but on the reverse side, once we kind of focus and fix one of these interconnected issues, it usually will improve the others. So um, really, you know, if you're having, say, an interrupted sleep due to hot flashes or night sweats, that would be a very different pathway to treat as opposed to someone who's having a hard time falling asleep because um, you can't turn your brain off. So um, it's definitely something that we need to really focus on and figure out what the core issue is and, and treat that. So um, sleep basics, I thought this was an interesting graph and a good reminder to us that sleep requirements um, can be a range um, and it's also individualized. So, um, you know, it's recommended for an adult to get seven to nine, but six to 10, you know, may be appropriate depending on how you function. Um, also, if you get good quality sleep, um, but only for six hours, that might be better than, um, you know, consistently interrupted sleep that's um, for 10 hours. So, you know, just listen to your body, figure out where that sweet spot is, where you feel um, well, west, re well rested throughout the day and, you know, continue to be tired at night. So some um, just sleep basics, some signs and symptoms of sleep deprivation. And some of this you kind of might be like, well, duh, of course. Um, that all kind of makes sense. Um, but um, so, you know, exhaustion, uh, drowsiness, changes in mood, in inability to concentrate, um, excessive daytime sleepiness or fatigue. And then, you know, sleep deprivation can cause lots of different things. It can reduce your ability to fight off infections. Um, you have an increased risk for depression and obesity with hormonal imbalances. So um, sleep is really an important modulator of neuroendocrine function, and it's shown that sleep loss, it reduces insulin sensitivity, it can increase cortisol levels in your body, and um, it also can increase that moderators of hunger and appetite. So you can see how all those are kind of connected. Um, and then it also impacts safety, you know, while you're driving safety of you and others. So the next few slides are going to be just kind of brief um, sleep architecture. So um, these are the, the four stages of sleep. So the first stage of, um, of sleep is non-REM, you know, stage one. So this is non-rapid eye movement, meaning that your eyes aren't rapidly moving. Um, and it's that first transition between wakefulness and sleep. So it's pretty short. Um, it's really um, easy to kind of wake up. You're not very much, you know, asleep yet. So um, that's kind of the first stage. And then the second stage is kind of when you're starting to get, get towards that deep sleep. So um, it's when you're body starts to relax, your heart rate decreases, um, your body temp drops a little bit. Um, and then non-REM stage three is what's um, considered deep sleep. So that's your most relaxed state. That's when your muscles are relaxed, your breathing is slower. Um, and that is a really important uh, phase in, in sleep. And then REM sleep is at the end, so it's the fourth, fourth phase, and this is when your body is relaxed and actually paralyzed, but your brain is very much um, active and you're dreaming. So when people talk about restorative sleep, um, that kind of includes this deep sleep and this REM sleep. So um, this is something where the benefits are seen with um, immune protection, that hormone regulation, tissue repair, healing, all those kind of things. So um, 
this cycle we we are these four phases we cycle through throughout um, our sleep at night um, roughly around 90 minutes per whole cycle um, and then the time spent in REM increases throughout the night um, with each you know with time that we're sleeping um, and then just kind of a side note said so when we accidentally or purposefully wake up um, with an alarm from REM sleep, that's when we kind of wake up and are like discombobulated and really drowsy for a while. So um, kind of the go-to is to try to somehow wake up when you're in that non-REM stage one. Um, and that's kind of when you wake up feeling ready to, to go. So the next phase or the next um, slide is um, about our circadian rhythm. So this is our 24 hour um, internal clock. So um, it's really important to understand how um, sleep is regulated and, and our sleep is regulated based on this circadian rhythm. Um, and this image is a great depiction of what's really happening throughout the day. So um, during nighttime, we're hopefully getting great restorative sleep. Um, and then right around 6 a.m. is when melatonin uh, stops getting released, so it kind of helps wake you up. Um, and then the big kicker and the realization is, as you can see on here, how super duper important that regulation or that um, sun exposure is on regulating your melatonin secretion timing, um, which in turn helps regulate when you get sleepy. So, um, you know, midday you have the most, as you can see, the most alertness and coordination. And then um, we're starting to get into the later hours of the evening um, where you're going to want to limit caffeine, um, start dimming the lights. So because um, the sun regulates the melatonin um, and the specific light, what happens is if you are having a lot of light at the um, right before bedtime, it kind of can throw off your melatonin. And this is not only lights in your house, but technology, TV, all of that kind of stuff. So it kind of is definitely important to start that relaxing um, routine at night when um, and, and during that, turn off all your kind of lights so that that melatonin can really start uh, to kick in. So um, that's um, the first portion of this. So um, Alondra is going to come up and she's going to talk. People keep on coming into the lobby and I have to like, I'm like, well, I got to get them. OK, so she's going to come in and talk about like the next phase of this, which is um, kind of how to treat all this hoopla. All right. Hi, guys. So my name is Alondra. I am one of the uh, nurse practitioners here in survivorship as well. So we're going to go ahead and talk about the treatment for insomnia. So now that we've learned the basics of it, what do we do, right? Initially, we want to look at the initial cause of what is causing, you know, your insomnia. Is there any physiological, biological cofactors that are preventing you from going to sleep? You know, do you have any obstructive um, sleep apnea? Do you have anemia? Do you have restless leg syndrome? Um, any urinary menopausal symptoms? Anything that could be related to comorbidity that we can address before we get into anything else, right? So um, we want to make sure that we address trust those things before we start getting to um, any other interventions. Um, the Addressing that is so important because then, you know, once we fix that, we can get everything, you know, moving forward. Um, but the next thing we want to do is, you know, start with the most or the least invasive um, procedures. And that one of those is, is uh, called sleep hygiene education. Um, so that looks like essentially cleaning up how you go to bed, you know, what your routines look like, um, you know, are we spending a lot of time in bed? Are we, um, you know, watching television in bed and reading and having snacks and on the phone in bed while we're going, while we're trying to go to sleep? Um, and then, you know, addressing that kind of cleaning up that routine definitely makes a huge difference. 
Um, the next thing that we will look at is cognitive behavioral therapy, particularly for insomnia. So this one's really um, intense, but really what it is, is just kind of rewiring your mind on how to treat sleep and how to um, function as a, you know, kind of have a better function for your sleep, um, uh, you know, uh, routines at night. Um, and then the last thing we want to do is we want to look at medication interventions. So again, I'm pretty sure that most of us are very familiar with those things. Um, essentially, it becomes one of the first practices. Um, you know, when we have insomnia, the first thing we think is, you know, we're going to go ahead and um, take a pill and we're, you know, essentially it's going to help us um, sleep. But that is um, the least effective um, and the least recommended when we're talking about insomnia, um, particularly in long term. So first, we'll talk about sleep hygiene education. So again, this is just cleaning up your sleep routine, right? Um, it may sound really obvious to some people, but you would be surprised. Um, we want to maintain a consistent bedtime and wake time um, schedule every day. So that means Monday through Friday, including the weekends, we go to bed around the same time and we wake up at the same time. Um, you know, we want to avoid moderate to strenuous physical activity three hours with you know before bedtime. And and so, you know, some of us don't have time to work out until in the evenings. Um, so this is particularly important trying to plan out our, you know, our workout schedules um, to avoid falling within that three hour, uh, you know, hour uh, period. Um, and like Allison said, you know, we definitely want to increase our exposure to bright, uh, bright light during the day, um, particularly because this is going to affect your circadian rhythm, your melatonin exposure and things like that. Um, another thing, you know, to consider is to reduce your screen time before bed. So this includes being on your tablets and watching TV in bed, um, being on the phone, um, you know, kind of shutting those things off and making sure we have a quiet, nice space. Um, another thing that's really important is to avoid heavy meals um, and limiting fluid, in fluid intake before bedtime. So again, you know, we don't want to eat a big pizza and a you know, pitcher of iced tea before you go to bed just because we know how that's going to go, right? You're going to get up constantly to pee or to urinate. Um, you know, you're not going to be able to uh, digest your food properly. Essentially, it's going to keep you up. Um, also avoiding alcohol, nicotine, and caffeine before bed. So, you know, some people say, hey, I'll have an extra glass of wine before bed. That should help me sleep. And it, usually that's not the case. Um, and then another thing with sleep hygiene is also enhancing um, your sleep environment. So making sure that you're in a dark, quiet, nice space, you know, clean, uh, clean sheets, just something that's inviting to sleep versus stressful and cluttered and, you know, um, you know, temperature regulated too. Some people love to sleep in cold rooms. Some people like, like to sleep in warmer rooms, making sure that that temperature is regulated for your personal preference. Um, set aside a uh, worry time. So that might be a little tricky, uh, but this is really important. You know, sometimes journaling, uh, making a list of things that are, you know, bothering you, um, kind of like a task list of things that you need to do the next day might be helpful. Um, just so you have that there, you know, you're going to address it tomorrow and it's not going to keep you up at night. And then avoiding looking at your clock. So this one sounds kind of funny, um, but it's it's actually true, right? So if we're co constantly looking at our, our alarm clock that's bright and it has the hours and the minutes and the seconds ticking at you, that might cause a little bit of stress. So we'd recommend flipping that over to face against the wall or maybe dimming, dimming the lights in the alarm clock. Um, and then uh, limiting your nap time. So if you have to take a nap, um, because sometimes we have really exhausting days, um, making sure that we only take one nap a day versus a couple and making sure that they're at least, you know, less than 30 minutes apart or uh, in general, not apart. <laughs> um, so that covers the sleep hygiene. Um, and again, like I said, this is really important to try to do first before we try to, you know, dive in into other interventions, because sometimes fixing these issues um, can essentially help with their uh, sleep disturbances. Um, and then the next one, which is 
our favorite one. Um, so cognitive behavioral therapy. So here um, it really just focuses on how to rewire your, um, your mind and how you look at things when it pertains to sleep. Um, so this is a, uh, you know, multi-level, multi-component um, approach to uh, sleep deprivation or sleep uh, or insomnia, right? Um, so this kind of looks at different aspects and different approaches to, to as a whole to make sure that we um, are addressing certain things to rewire your brain um, in order to help, you know, kind of alleviate those stressors that are causing the sleep disturbances. Um, so CBTI is a brief treatment, typically lasts about four to eight sessions. Um, traditionally, it has been done on one-on-one -on -one delivery, um, but because of COVID and, you know, now the implementation of telemedicine, um, we've been actually been able to do this um, online. So either through telemedicine um, or on, uh, uh, app, uh, online services um, or programs and then books. And actually research has showed us um, most recently that this has been very effective. So meaning you're, you're going to get the same outcomes if you did it face-to-face um, -face with the uh, provider versus an online service or a book. So the overall, uh, you know, outcomes of it is to improve, you know, insomnia symptoms um, and to make sure that, you know, we kind of rewire your brain in, in, into to thinking this way. Um, so the things that, you know, are addressing cognitive behavioral therapy, um, you know, are sleep education, stimulus control, um, sleep restriction and relaxation. And so I'm going to go ahead and check that out on the next slide. Um, so, you know, um, some of these are pretty basic, you know, sleep education so is kind of what Allison had just re uh, reviewed. So it talks about sleep basics. So we kind of want to make sure that you understand why it's important that we need to sleep a certain amount of hours, um, why it's important to identify some of the problems that may be causing the sleep disturbances. Um, and so, you know, you know, why is it important for us to have enough sunlight exposure, uh, making sure that we're, you know, taking care of other cofactors that might be affecting our sleep. Um, the other thing that addresses is uh, uh, stimulus control. So on stimulus control, it really talks about, you know, uh, practicing going to bed when sleeping is being sleepy. So really associating that, you know, bed equals sleep. So we're going to use the bed for sleep. We're going to use the bed for sex. We're going to use the bed to rest. We're not going to use it to watch TV and read books and eat snacks and things like that. Right. Um, you know, it talks about, you know, if you're unable to sleep, we want to make sure that we get out of bed for at least 20 minutes and that we're coming back to bed, when, you know, when we're feeling sleepy again versus laying in bed and just, you know, kind of tossing and turning. Um, we also uh, want to make sure that we are um, getting up at the same time. So keeping that sleep um, routine, making sure that, you know, we're going to bed at the same time, waking up at the same time, regardless of the type of sleep that you're getting. Um, so it talks about, you know, making sure that we're controlling all the other environments that might be affecting your sleep, um, you know, efficient, uh, uh, your effective uh, sleep. Um, and then the, the third item that's discussed in cognitive behavioral therapy is sleep restriction. So this was really, really interesting. Um, I kind of, I kind of, look at this more like an adult sleep training. <laughs> so, you know, when you were training your children to sleep, this is kind of that same version. So really it focuses on making sure that we're keeping a diary of your sleep patterns, right? So we look at the time that you lay in bed. Um, we look at the time that it takes, you know, how long it takes you to fall asleep and how long you're actually asleep. It actually comes, there's a formula associated to this. So we're looking at the percentage of time that you're laying in bed, falling asleep, actually sleeping and we divide that into um, uh, overall to make sure that we're getting uh, efficient sleep. And so this will um, either allow you to restrict or compress your sleep, meaning that we will add or subtract a certain amount of time. So for example, if we're going to bed at eight and we're falling asleep at 11, PM and we're waking up at four, then that means that we technically should be going to bed at 11 and getting up at 4 AM. Um, and we do this over a series of days, usually about a week, and then we start to restrict or add more minutes um, to make sure that we're getting efficient sleep. It's a little tricky and it sounds a little complicated, but it's so efficient because if you continue to do this pattern, 
um, over a period of time, a week or two, you essentially will be really, really tired and essentially will we get effective um, and efficient sleep, which is essentially what we want to do, right? Um, and then the other thing that um, CBTI, or cognitive behavioral therapy, um, looks at is also relaxation. Um, so this is something that Tina will be talking about soon. Um, so this, you know, this uses strategies for progressive um, relaxation, so muscle relaxation, diaphragmatic breathing, um, mind Mindfulness, things that you can do in addition to all of these other interventions to make sure that we're kind of doing an overall comprehensive approach to um, your, you know, cognitive behavioral therapy. Um, and, you know, this is, again, um, something that research has showed us that over a period of time, cognitive behavioral therapy is far more effective than just having a medication intervention or maybe just doing the um, sleep hygiene interventions as well. Um, I was just reading a recent study that said, you know, in combination with medication and or CBTI, or you know, sleep hygiene, patients seem to have better outcomes um, when, it, when it comes to sleep. Um, and then that kind of brings me to the next topic, which is something that I'm pretty sure we're all familiar with, which is the medication intervention. Um, so, you know, this is unfortunately something that is usually done first when we're dealing with insomnia, right? You have insomnia, you go to the doctors and they put you on a pill or something like that. Um, but research has recently showed us that, um, you know, sleep aids for a long period of time are not very effective, primarily because there's a concept called rebound insomnia, meaning that you use it for a significant amount of time and all of a sudden it stops working and you're back to that insomnia again. Um, and another thing to consider is, you know, just taking additional medications come with side effects as well. Um, so that is also pro problematic because we don't want to have additional side effects. Um, and, you know, in, in our field, you know, that is a concern of ours as well, because if you're taking particular medications in addition to the sleep aids, they can have some certain interactions um, and can affect the, you know, the, the way that your body processes them. And so we just kind of want to stay away from them. Um, However, you know, we do believe that for acute situations, some of the sleep aids are very helpful. Um, we do believe that for patients with underlying, you know, anxiety, depression, and then in addition to insomnia, we do believe that those are very helpful, but those are helpful for a short period of time and shouldn't be taken for a long period of time. Um, so some of the over-the-counter medications I'm sure you're very familiar with, um, which is melatonin and Benadryl. Um, those, you know, you can you can take and sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. Um, you know, some studies suggest that melatonin um, works in, in smaller doses versus that usual 10 milligram that's um, on the, you know, on the uh, pill bottle. Um, and then, you know, with Benadryl, you know that um, it works, but then you wake up feeling really drowsy and it just, you know, just kind of feel weird the rest of the day. Um, again, all of these are just very kind of put in a Band-Aid over, you know, what, what the real problem is. Um, and then along with the other prescription medications or so the other sleep aids, you know, you do require a prescription from a provider. They do require close monitoring and they should be tapered off uh, after a certain amount of time. So again, you know, medications are helpful for acute uh, situations, but they shouldn't be taken in a long period of time. Um, and they are very helpful if we're trying to, um, you know, uh, you know, you utilize the cognitive behavioral therapy as this is very effective in treating the actual problem for long periods of time. Um, and now that we've kind of talked about all of this interventions and, and things that we recommend, um, a couple of resources that we found really helpful within the community or out online. Um, uh, we found when we really like this uh, app called Sleepio. Uh, Sleepio is an app that does, um, uh, you know, um, implement CBTI, and it's actually a really, really awesome app. Um, it is something that you, it's self-driven, so you have to be on top of it. Um, but definitely, if it's something that you think might be helpful, we can certainly um, talk about this, um, you know, offline. Um, we also recommend the Calm app, and that one is a little tricky because the free trial is very limited, so you can get access to a couple things. Um, so it has like relaxation, um, uh, music, 
music, uh, you know, little clips. You can have, I think you can listen to a book or so, um, uh, but it, it is, if you want to get more of the features, you do have to pay uh, a monthly subscription. Um, there's a couple books out there that, you know, do um, implement CBTI, so we can talk about those as well. And then Cancer Support Community has a lot of online classes um, that actually Tina teaches um, that shows, you know, focuses on, you know, relaxation and those mindfulness, um, you know, support approaches um, that we can certainly guide you to. So I'm going to give this, pass this on to Tina now, and she is going to walk us through our um, next portion. Thanks, guys. Can you help me with my, I just have to click the, the forward button for the slideshow, right? Yeah, right here. I just want to get it up. Uh, yes. So I'm, I'm clicking, show me again. Right here. Just click that yep. right there. Okay, good. Great. Super. Okay. I wish I could see everybody. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Welcome. And um, thank you for having me. And it's wonderful to be here tonight. I can't see you, but I'm, I'm right here with you. And I want you to know that coming tonight, congratulate yourself because it is a big self-care move for you to care enough to come and to do this. A lot of self-care. So congratulations on that. And um, I want to talk to you a little bit tonight and just for a moment, really, just a few slides I have on Yoga Nidra. And then I want to give you an experience. And so I hope you stay with me and I hope you intend to um, experience this um, rich practice of Yoga Nidra. What is Yoga Nidra? Uh, the word Nidra means sleep in Sanskrit. It's been around for thousands of years. And um, it's commonly known as yoga sleep or sleep with awareness. Am I clicking right here for that one? Just right here. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. So your body is going to rest and your mind is just going to disengage from thoughts. Okay. What I want to make sure you know is that however you practice this is your practice. OK, you don't have to do it any one way. Whatever you do is fine. So the way you practice it is really your practice. The only thing you really have to do is kind of welcome it, relax and just be with what is. You're going to practice lying down, mostly lying down or sitting OK, in a room without distractions. So while you're listening to me talk, Maybe you can think about where you're going to practice and how you're going to get most comfortable turning off uh, your phones, any electronic devices, turn off, grab props such as pillows or blankets for comfort, and um, make sure that you're in a quiet space and you can just unplug, right, for a little bit. You're just going to follow my voice. So if you're in a chair, make sure your back is supported because I really want you to be able to kind of lean back. So if you have a pillow, you can pillow your low back. If you're on the floor, you want your head to be really comfortable, whether you're in a chair or on the floor. The head is the big thing because you don't want your chin ever higher than your forehead. OK, you want your chin to be lower than your forehead um, just so the nervous system can calm down. Oops, excuse me, one sec. Clicking, but it's not advancing. Oh, there we go, sorry. So the big benefit of Yoga Nidra, this calms your nervous system, leading to less stress and better health. So what you're, when you are asking yourself like, hmm, it's kind of a little self-inquiry. Um, we usually, if we're having sleep problems, we have a category of safety and comfort. So under comfort, you know, is my head comfortable? 
Am I warm enough? Am I cool enough? Can I quiet down? Is it a quiet space? Is my phone off? Under safety, usually you have a category of fear or, you know, things that you're worried about. So ask yourself these questions. Um, am I anxious? Am I worried? Uh, am I fearful? Or do I have a lot on my mind? What am I thinking about? So just a little self-inquiry. And I want you now to go ahead and get in the most comfortable position you can get in. And close your eyes. You can dim your lights, dim your lights. If you don't want to close your eyes, you're gazing down at a spot that's unmoving. And you decide. And you're just going to just do a little practice of first listening to sound. And then thinking to yourself, the only place I can ever be is where I am. That's a famous quote by John Kabat-Zinn. Just contemplate that a moment. The only place I can be is here where I am. And if you're creating a future that doesn't exist yet, then that's the definition of worry. Um, the late Yanni Chapman, founder of the Yoga Therapy for Cancer program, always said that. I love that. And just take a deep breath and know that there's no reason to create a future. Just be here. That's the whole science behind mindfulness and mindfulness-based stress reduction. Just being right here, right now. And take a deep breath and get heavier in your chair or on the floor. Once again, move to sound further away and closer. Notice the light level in the room, even with your eyes closed or open. Notice light level. Notice sensations of the air, the coolness or the warmth. Maybe notice the sensations of the air in your nostrils as you breathe in. And the warmth on the upper lip. And as you settle in, you might feel a little wiggly. Just take any final adjustments you need to get even more comfortable. Pillows under the knees. Anything you need, wiggle around. Give yourself permission to move to the belly, the abdomen, and allow all the muscles in the abdominal wall to relax. The whole belly relaxes, the rib cage relaxes, and the whole trunk of the body softens and relaxes. Just let it melt like jello. Let it go like butter. Just let it totally soften. Because we restrict so often and then the breath becomes restricted. So as you ease in and softly settle, notice the breath. Just a gentle breath in and a gentle breath out. The breath moving smoothly. Release any unnecessary tension in the jaw, your shoulders, and your hips. And allow ease and relaxation to spread throughout the body and the mind.
Remember, you have nothing to do and no place to go. Nothing to fix, nothing to change. You're just an observer, just observing your breath. Let your feet become warm, soft, and relaxed. And the legs warm, soft, and relaxed. The hips soft and relaxed. The back body soft, relaxed. Shoulders and arms soft and relaxed. Take an in-breath, and on the next out-breath, just allow every muscle in the body to get heavy. And deepen into a new level of relaxation. And relaxation doesn't stop at a point, it just keeps going. So give yourself permission. And if the mind wanders to sound or thoughts, that's totally normal. Lovingly, compassionately, you're just bringing yourself back to your breath, to the moment, maybe even to the sensations in the fingers, the hands, Maybe sensing tingling or warmth. Maybe even your palms become pools of warmth and relaxation. Just bring to mind, I invite you now, bring to mind a scene or situation that brings you a deep sense of peace and ease. It can be real or imaginary. Your inner resource. And just place yourself there. And just notice how and where it feels in your body to experience this ease and peace. This sense of well-being. Again, if your mind wanders, move back to this sense of deep peace, inner stillness, well-being. Any way you experience this is your experience, and it is good because it is your experience. Give yourself permission 
be compassionate and take time. No worries, there's nothing to fix or change. It's just your moment of sensing your place of peace and ease and all sensations. Bring awareness now back to the breath, keeping the eyes closed. Notice that when the body is relaxed, often the breath will relax. And when the body and breath relax, the mind slows and it puts you in a deeply restorative state of healing. Just follow the smooth and gentle breath. Maybe allowing the exhale to be a little slightly longer than the inhale. Gently nudging it out to the end. Noticing the pauses between the inhale and the exhale. And then when you're ready with the eyes closed, gently notice the room around you, maybe sounds once again. And sounds come and sounds go, just like puffy white clouds with no attachment. And then notice thought, and thoughts come and thoughts go. And you can disattach the way you disattach to sound. With thoughts, let them come, let them go, like puffy white clouds. Bring awareness back to the breath. And as you breathe in, think of an intention for healing, for health and well being, as you allow the inhale to touch every cell of the body, just with healing energy. And as you breathe out, begin to let go, release. Do that a few times, just a very invigorating inhale. Breathing in, health and well-being. 
breathing out anything you're holding, any thought that isn't going to serve you, anything that's not going to serve you, just let go. One last time, big breath in, big breath out. Start wiggling your fingers and toes. If you want to bring your arms up overhead for a stretch, you can do that. Point your toes, stretch, maybe stretch your arms up any way you want to start moving. Noticing once again, temperature of the air, sound, breath in your nostrils. You can begin to slowly flutter your eyes open. Maybe move to the right in a fetal pose if you're on the floor. You can even stay lying down or reclined in your chair. And I thank you very much for your time tonight. Thank you. Have a great evening. It was an honor. All right. So um, thank you, Tina. That was very relaxing and um, just definitely I needed, I really needed that. <laughs> um, so um, the next kind of part of this is just um, a question and answer kind of uh, session. So I am actually, I'm going to, go in and unmute you. <laughs> uh, options. Okay. Save. So um, you all are still muted, but um, if you unmute yourself, then you'll be able to talk. So, um, Anyone? <laughs> oh. I think everybody's asleep. <laughs> <laughs> I know I was practically asleep. I know. Um, that was relaxing for sure. Good. Yeah. Um, Tina does a, you do a um, 10 minute mind uh, meditation in the morning as well, right? Wednesday mornings, mm -hmm. when, 9 a.m. Wednesday mornings at 9 a.m. So um, I don't know. I just, I always think that if you can practice something like that in the morning and at night, um, like how can you not just be able to like tackle the day and to be able to like tackle the night? I just, I think that that's such things that we kind of, no, we probably need to do, but we just don't take the time to do it. So, um, but yeah, and sometimes it's kind of hard to know how to do it on your own. So it's good. And um, Tina, her phone number and her email address is there. So if you ever have any questions or or need some instruction, you know, she would love to help. Yeah, I can send everybody my links to that mini meditation. On yeah. If you're interested. Yep. I can email that out as well. Aaron, is there a... There's also a question. Are there any resources, books, or YouTube meditation that you might suggest? I think that might be directed more towards Tina. Well, actually, Christ Hospital has my um, yoga ninja on mm -hmm. their website. Yeah, so we I have um, it on our health operations and on our survivorship wellness mm -hmm. um, website. So you guys are feel free to access those. And if you want us to send you a link to them, we are happy to do that. Okay. Um, so you can just shoot um Aaron a call or you can um email one of us um and we can forward you guys all our emails and we can get that information to you because we do have those on our website and they're really great Tina has done a really great job on those yeah and actually I think there is some on YouTube as well that you've done yeah yeah there is so um yeah it's under my channel Tina Walter yeah 
some different meditation for the kids. Okay. And then um, Alondra did have a book on her um, while she was talking that um, actually, I believe the um, physician that started CBTI or was involved with CBTI in some way um, actually did this book, I believe, this Say Goodnight to Insomnia. So definitely something to check out if you do want um, a book, um, if that's kind of your go-to. And I think you know, everyone's a little bit different in, in what they feel like is going to help them, whether it's like by themselves on their own or talking to someone in person or group or whatnot. So really just think about how you learn what's best for you and your routine and in your like in your life, you know, with all the lovely chaos that we have all the time. Um, so just really think about those kind of things. And if it's something that we can help with, we can definitely um, set up a time to kind of go over some of this stuff, stuff, and then really like create a plan with you, and then uh, call you and make sure you're doing what you need to be doing. <laughs> um, yes, Aaron. Are there any survivor wellness websites that you can share that we know? Well, so we have one at Christ Hospital. Um, our survivorship wellness, we do have some stuff on that. Yeah. Um, so some other survivorship resources, um, American Cancer Society has um, a lot of information on like survivorship and stuff like that. Um, can you think of anything else that has specifics on survivorship concerns? Um, I NCI? NCI does, I think um, if you look on the websites. Oh, um, Liv the Livestrong, isn't Livestrong? Live strong? That has a lot of um, like other like patient education kind of things. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. You can compile something and send them over. Yeah. Them. Yeah. I don't know if you can. So Alondra said that we can. Um, that can be something we'll look at into, and then we can email it out to you guys. Yes, Erin. Um, will this recording be available in the future, and how would we be able to access it? Yes. So. Um, it is recorded and it will be in our um, on our Christ Hospital survivorship um, website. So if you go to Christ Hospital and go the dot com and then go to, uh, I think, the cancer section and then under that chat, there's supportive services. OK, um, Misty's going to go in and hit the link in the chat box so you guys can just go ahead and click that. So. I'm not very good at uh, specific instructions, so that's probably best. <laughs> I think Heather has a question. Yes, Heather. Yes. So, um, of course I do. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, so when Alondra was talking, hi, Alondra. I know it's been a while since I've seen you. Um, <laughs> but I was wondering, with me using the tactile pump, I use that a lot at night. Um, and then I also use it in the morning when I work. So I am a gluttony for punishment. So I actually signed up to work tonight, tomorrow night in bed booking. But when I come home, I know um, I have found that when I get on the pump, I wind up falling asleep. So mm -hmm. I don't know. Is that something that I need to try to figure out to do earlier? I mean, is that something that's going to inter yeah. have interruptions? I don't know if there's anybody else, you know, in this meeting that has a lymphedema pump, but I'm sure that's something that um, others probably find difficulty with when trying to relax. Oh, yeah. Be how can you not, you're getting a massage, how do you not, like, keep your eyes open? And it's a, right. like you said, Heather, it's like a, a, a good chunk of time. It's not like a quick massage. It's a, oh, it's for a an hour. Yep. Yeah. And actually, I, I will say I've talked to, um, actually a lot of people that have had that pump and they have the exact same concern that it, what happens is they do it and then they fall asleep and then they wake up and then have to do their bedtime routine. And then they try to fall asleep, but they're not tired anymore because they just took essentially a cat nap at like 8 PM. Right. So yeah. I think, I think it would be a good idea to probably, if you can, um, you know, do it maybe earlier in the day, Okay. Um, but also shift work is a whole other topic that's. Oh, I know. Yeah. A, a, yeah. <laughs> a, poop, a poop storm. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. But yeah, I just wonder with the nights that I'm home, you know, cause usually I try to get in bed about eight or eight 30 because you can program that machine 
to, you could be on it for a couple of, uh, several hours easily, mm -hmm. depending on um, what you set up. So um, I just wonder if that was something. So maybe that's what I'll have to try to do is, is get it set up a little bit earlier. And that also might be a good um, question to ask um, um, a specialist that you may see. Um, mm -hmm. So that might be a good thing to ask, like timing wise, t so that I can get restorative sleep and not fragment and sleep. Uh, what is recommended to, to do this or, or what's okay. best for sleep? That might be a good question for that, that gal. Okay, yeah. thanks. Um, yeah. First of all, uh, Misty did add the link for survivorship for the Christ Hospital website. So okay. It's in the chat box on the side. Uh, if everyone can see that. And then also we had a recommendation from one of the uh, viewers tonight. Uh, if you're interested in live session uh, meditation, uh, relaxation classes, mm -hmm. uh, they have them on Eventbrite. Oh. So go to the Eventbrite website and they can find links to live classes on the Eventbrite website. Oh, great. So you guys all heard that, right? You have your, do you have your mic on? Or did you guys hear what Aaron said? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So Eventbrite has those, um, some other live events um, for uh, those kind of things. So that's great. Anyone else? Misty also has a lot of uh, lists of survivorship communities on the site uh, listed at the bottom of the, of the link as okay. well. Okay. Yep. So um, the link that she provided on the bottom has some other like kind of resources and stuff that you guys can go to to get more information. But yeah, cancer support community does have a lot of um, of great, you know, whether it's, I think they're still doing Zoom, right? So, I mean, kind of like what we did tonight, they have so many different um, avenues of of doing these, kind of like what Tina said, this, like self, I mean, making it as like a self-care thing of of putting in the time and effort and um, and going to these events and, and trying to make sure that you're, you um, incorporating some of these relaxing things um because life is ridiculously stressful so um but putting in that time for not only that but um really focusing on, on your sleep as well um i don't know if you remember you know way back when when you'd get consistently great sleep and you'd wake up feeling like you could tackle the world and you know you just feel awesome um and, you know, that's our goal is to kind of get back to that. And we can, it's just going to take sometimes effort and time and like work, unfortunately. <laughs> but I think in the long run, um, you know, not only medically and, and physiologically in your body, but mentally, it's just, a, it's, it's a super important part of our life. So. But yeah, like a self a self care routine, making sure that you are putting in that time if you can. Allison, I yeah. was going to mention on the site that we provided, there was our previous event that we did. So if you wanted to start using Tina's um, calming voice to sleep tonight, you can get right on that website, and she is taped right on there. So. <laughs> is that the one that I'm also yeah, presenting? Yeah. So yeah. That presentation was what 2018, and I was very pregnant. <laughs> and yeah. and we, yep. I'm one hoping, hopefully, at some point we can start doing these in person because it's, um, I mean, this is great to be able to do it at your home, and, you know, the comfort of your home, and not have to drive in the rain and the craziness. But it's always, it's always nicer to kind of see you guys in person. But. All right, guys. Well, um, our number, so well, our number, Aaron's number is, where is it? It's right there. So 585-4154. And if you need anything or have any other questions 
or just want to talk to one of us about anything that we talked about tonight, um, please don't hesitate to call. Um, we would love to help you really in any way, not only just sleep, but in any kind of survivorship um, issue that you might have. Um, that's why we're here and that's what we love to do. So um, please utilize us and um, we would love to hear from you. So we will exit out and I hope you guys have a good rest of the night and um, take care. Bye.